So I might sound like a little bit of a hypocrite in this video um, because I sort of argue the point that humanity can't go on without fossil fuels. Um, and I know I just have put up videos about the tornadoes in the U.S. in 2019 and climate change and the jet stream. But, you know, can we live without fossil fuels objectively, I guess, is the question. Um, obviously, I don't want them. You know, keep it in the ground, keep the carbon in the ground. But looking at 7, 8 billion people on the planet trying to run a complex society, do you need fossil fuels part of that equation? Um, there's obviously folks that will argue that we can do without them, and there's folks that argue we can't. And I'm not really necessarily on either one of their sides statically, you know, because this, you know, the technology is changing constantly, and maybe there will be some sort of miracle pill, I guess you might say, that comes along, you know, a research university. But, you know, we're pumping in trillions of dollars into these universities for sort of that magic pill, so to speak. And, um, you know, there's really nothing on the horizon that really seems to solve our problems. Um, and, you know, there's also just the issue that, um, you know, our soils have just been killed and they're, it's almost our farming systems almost dependent on these fossil fuel derived products uh, to feed 7 billion people. Um, I think permaculture and agroforestry and that sort of thing totally works, but you can't really just put it into place overnight. So my sort of question is, can you really design an entirely different society, you know, in the window that we have left with fossil fuels? So then the question becomes, well, what is that window that we have left? Um, and the more I look into it, the more I look at this equation, it's called energy return on energy investment. You know, the basic concept is uh, you take a barrel of oil and you put that barrel of oil to work to get more oil. And if that one barrel of oil, you know, gets you a hundred barrels of oil, right? You take a barrel of oil to run some machinery that digs out another hundred barrels from the ground, you know, you're doing really well. But if your barrel of oil, you know, only gets you five barrels of oil, well, now you're starting to, you know, things are getting a little more sketchy. Um, and if you're one barrel of oil, the energy that it puts out can only get you one more barrel of oil. Now you've reached the break even point. You can't get any more oil. Um, and so we're inching up on that. And the question is, is how soon are we inching up on that point where the energy we have to put into the system is equaling the energy that's coming out of the system. So effectively you're doing nothing. You're not getting any energy at all. Um, you know, and, and really, is it going to be one-to-one? -one? No, we'll probably never quite get there, you know, but God, you know, one to 10, one to five, one to three, as those ratios come down, things, you know, the systems really fall apart. And that's kind of where we're at right now is, um, you know, these ratios could hit subcritical, so to speak, in the early 2020s, 2022, 2023, uh, is sort of when, you know, these petrogeologists, um, I would say the most bearish of them say we could really run out. So, you know, that's uh, three or four years from now. That's really not too long. Uh, whereas sort of the average geologist, petrogeologist, whatever you want to call them, still says, well, you know, we have 20 years, right? Which is still really soon. <laughs> so it's like even kind of the mainstream scientists in this field are saying, you know, it is a matter of decades. It's not a matter of centuries that we have left. Um, and there's some crazy statistics, like how much new oil we discover every year, you know, and we might only discover a couple weeks worth of new oil for the entire year. So over an entire year of exploring, looking for oil, you've only found about three weeks worth of global demand. So, you know, you're basically, if you're searching for oil for 24 hours, um, on a global level, you're finding a global supply of maybe you know, two or three hours or something like that. So, um, you know, we're really surviving off of oil reserves we found in previous decades and in previous years. You know, that's what we're really going strong on right now. Saudi Arabia, Angola, Venezuela, 
you know, and obviously, you know, that's a whole separate topic, uh, Venezuela and its economic instability and the oil price volatility that's coming because, you know, actually in some ways the dynamics of the jet stream that I talked about in my previous video, the jet stream of the earth and the dynamics of oil economics, which is that, you know, it's really not absolute price because you can, you know, you can have inflation or deflation. You can say oil is two bucks a barrel or, or, or two bucks a gallon or five bucks a gallon, right? Or 40, you know, $20 a barrel, barrel versus $100 a barrel. You know, that's kind of the range that's been in the last decade or so, or, you know, 30 to 120. Um, you know, that, you know, that's, it's really the volatility because you can, you can manipulate pricing, right? But the volatility is a lot harder to manip manipulate because as systems break down, you get these more volatile swings. So, um, it's really important with the jet stream, you know, with with uh, with these financial systems that I think volatility is probably one of the, your best technical indicators for all these systems that are experiencing trouble right now, be it the climate and the weather system or financial systems. Uh, you know, volatility is really a measure of things going south. So we're seeing that in a lot of areas, a lot of different areas of the global systems right now, and oil is definitely one of those. It's remained relatively stable this year uh, compared to maybe some of the previous years. Probably 2016 was, I would say, one of the crazier years uh, in the last few that I can remember. Um, you know, obviously after quantitative easing ended, and I guess that was, you know, 2014-ish or so, we just really saw the prices just absolutely plummet. Um, and then, you know, things have sort of found their equilibrium for the time being, but there's so many other factors in play. You know, it's highly unlikely that equilibrium of, you know, 50 or 60 bucks a barrel that we have found right now, which is great. That probably is the sweet spot it is actually going to stick around. So, you know, I guess there's a question, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because I got, you know, a lot of people get into the environment and they find out about, you know, finite oil. So then it's like all of a sudden you're like, you know, here you are telling everyone, oh, we need to get off oil. And then you're all of a sudden it's like, well, you know, we might not survive if we get off oil. And, you know, is that really the issue? Because we only have so much left that the amount that we're actually going to put into the atmosphere um, is less than the amount that we've already put in. So it's like, you know, is it, I, I think the amount that we have left to burn is still quite significant because we burn more and more every year for, for now. Um, but it's like, I'm almost at the point of arguing we should really be cutting our oil consumption now dramatically um, so that we can sort of buffer the fall a little bit because right now we're going through it so quickly that we're probably just going to go over a cliff in terms of not having oil left instead of, you know, is there an opportunity for a soft landing where if we cut back oil consumption dramatically right now, that we'll have some left for the coming decades so that we can use it for like uh, synthetic fibers and, agri and some agricultural uses, <laughs> you know, because we talk about green energy, right? But we don't talk about all the other synthetic products that come out of Petro. So there's a lot of other things besides energy that we de depend on there. And <coughs> excuse me, some peanut shells. But I think that's enough for now.